when India confronts terror and all other options run out. One organization is called upon as the last resort. They know that they could catch the first bullet in the air, land, or water. But they will protect. Their reputation is hard earned with blood and sacrifice. These are commandos that come together from the different forces of India. The police, the Central Armed Police Forces, the Army. They are the National Security Guard. From the NSG campus have emerged some of the greatest heroes of India, the Black Cat Commandos, who have fought terror in many battlefields across the country. Of these, perhaps the most prominent in public memory is 2611 and the supreme sacrifice made by commandos of the NSG. Their legacy is protected at NSG even today. This sofa was recovered from the Taj Hotel in Mumbai, where some of the fiercest fighting of 2611 took place. As a new entrant to the National Security Guard, Prasenjit Tomer stands humbled in front of the bullet-ridden reminders of that battle. His first day as an NSG commando began on this very sofa. He recalls those events and the words of his commanding officer. The place that you are sitting is, it's a, we call it cradle of sacrifice. When you are sitting here, you must realize that you are, you are guarding a legacy. But becoming a black cat commando is not for the faint of heart. NSG pushes its men to go beyond the brink beyond the levels of human endurance, beyond their deepest fears. <coughs> These training grounds of NSG turn men into lethal weapons. It is here that they learn to fight and how to win. Three times a year, the National Security Guard conducts trials for new commandos. Prasenjit Tomer is among the many hoping to get selected. So I'm on my way to join the, the training center NSG. And there my three months probation will start. Only if he makes it through the 12-week commando conversion course and then a further six weeks of unit induction can he earn the black uniform of the NSG. I belong to Aligarh, where I was born and brought up and done my schooling there. Uh, Education-wise, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm a, I've done my engineering from Aligarh Muslim University. NSG draws its manpower from the police, army and paramilitary forces. The almost 800 candidates trying out 
are all experienced and toughened personnel. They will have to be if they intend to qualify for one of the toughest commando courses in the world. The screening week is crucial. Half these candidates will be eliminated within this period itself and not even make it to the three month commando conversion course. Tomer is lucky. He meets up with acquaintances on the first day itself. Hi, Sandeep. Hi, Sandeep. Hi, Good. Good. Jain, sir. Hi. Sir, Major Tomer, sir. How are you? Hi, Sandeep. Hi, Captain Nath, sir. Hi, Captain Nath, sir. Major Tomer, sir. You have to go before? We have to go before. I thought, sir, let's go before. What's the volume of the volume, sir? We're telling you about the time. 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 The first week reveals how competitive entering NSG is. The Training Center of National Security Guard is a premier training institute of the country, which is mandated to train probationers drawn from the Indian Army and various Central Armed Police Forces for induction into the National Security Guard. The energy has got set physical standards. You clear them, you will be a part of energy. I will, I will be very honest that I was not very sure of it, but I did clear them. Aside from physical tests, firearm proficiency is also crucial. I was given an SAS rifle and we were made to fire from 25 meters. I made a group of 3 centimeters from uh, in the screening test. Tomer makes the grade. To start the course, there is a filtration or a screening test which takes place. And there are a lot of commandos who are not able to pass at the screening stage itself. And then perforce we have to send them back. NSG is a force that deals specifically with terrorism in all its forms. At the National Security Guard headquarters, the senior most officer is the director general. The party is in the morning, NSG is the premier urban anti-terror force of India, and we are called upon to carry out operations which are of extremely critical nature. The primary role of NSG is as a anti-terror force to deal with terror in all its manifestations. In some respects, that's why it's called as the force of last resort. And moreover, by our very definition as a federal contingency force, we are expected to do operations which are extremely of uh, serious nature when there is a serious threat to national security as such. The NSG campus at Mane Sur is spread across about 1,600 acres. Across its many training grounds, counter-terror tactics are practiced and perfected. These innovative commandos train without most of the equipment other commandos use. They practice parkour as a technique to enter buildings when conventional ingress is difficult. NSG is not only based here in Mane Sur, there are regional hubs across the country. Wherever they are located, the National Security Guard has become like a well-oiled machine. The one-week screening test is over. Only about half the men qualify for the commando conversion course. Candidate Tomer is among the chosen few. They wear the uniforms of their parent units. Different colors and badges show the diversity of the forces that enter NSG. NSG is a very uh, happy mix of the best elements of the army, the paramilitary, and the police. But this is a unique experiment where you have a good mix of all three. And that's, I think, ultimately the USP of this organization. 
At NSG, there is little time to waste. A short welcome address, and the men are marched off. Well, after the opening address, we were made to see what all weapons we will be using and what on what all weapons will be given training on. Being a counter-terrorism force, the weapons used at NSG are state-of-the-art, comparable to the best special force units across the world. We knew that the training is going to start from today and we knew that there's going to be some sort of welcome for us. At NSG, welcome has an entirely different meaning for an aspiring commando. NSG veterans call it the ice breaking. Crawling, push-ups, I don't know what, I, what not I did that day. And I think it went on for like two, three hours. The ice breaking is only a taste of things to come. From this point on, the commando conversion course will begin in earnest. For the remaining 11 weeks, Tomer and the other trainees will be pushed to the brink. <laughs> NSG is divided into three main pillars. The counter-terror force consists of units that handle terrorism in any scenario. This includes counter hijack and hostage rescue missions on land, sea, or air. The Close Protection Force protects select VIPs across India. The third pillar is the state-of-the-art bomb detection and disposal squad and the National Bomb Data Center. All of NSG's operations are fraught with danger. The Close Protection Force's work is no exception they protect high-risk VIPs at extreme risk to themselves, earning them the nickname, the Bullet Catchers. The word Bullet Catchers originates from the team's unparalleled ability to interpose themselves between the threat and the protectee while neutralizing the threat. As safety and well-being of the commando is our priority, our team is equipped with state-of-the-art weaponry and specialized equipment. We also continuously focus on enhancing our performance and upgrading our capabilities to stay ahead of any potential threat which may come in future. The Close Protection Force commandos are well aware of the dangers of their job. So they ensure that any threat is neutralized before the situation goes out of hand. The men have survived the rigorous 12 weeks commando conversion course and are ready for induction into the different departments of the NSG. Tomer is allotted one of the premier counter-terror units. This unit has been decorated with three Ashok Chakras. Uh, that is the highest gallantry award during the peacetime. And so I opted for it and I was just lucky enough to get it also. You have a great welcome. You have come orientation training here. The upcoming six weeks of counter-terrorism unit training will make the past three months seem like a cakewalk. Abhi aap ek specialist unit mein aa rahe. Is desh ka elite counter-terror unit hai. Hamara itihas khun se likha hua hai. Aur aaj is training karne ke baad jab aap black in honge, to aap us virasat, us legacy ke custody in honge. Iske liye aap logo se expectation hai. कि आप यहां पर आपके दाएं बैठे हुए उस्ताद जो सिखाएंगे उसको बहुत लगन से बहुत मेहनत से सीखेंगे जेंसर समय का मिसर This training officer and his team would be responsible for their induction over the next six weeks. So how were you performing in training center? So I was performing well, sir. I have uh, cleared all my tests. Mm -hmm. and excellent, sir. And excellent. Sir. So I hope you know here, the standards are much different and much yes. higher. So the level of physical exertion is a lot more here. You will be uh, tested on much difficult grounds. Sir. And you will have to push yourself harder here. Yes. Please, everybody, march off. Yes, sir. Jain. Among the first lessons taught at a counter-terror unit is how to be part of an intervention team. Each team consists of about six members. 
working in perfect synchronicity. A single intervention team is the first building block of any counter-terror force. Each member is also a specialist in one particular skill. Demolitions, communications, medicine, sniper marksmanship, among other skills. They are generally supported by a dog and handler from the NSG K9 squad. Each team member carries over 20 kilos of kit and protective gear into battle. In the first week, the inductees are drilled in various intervention simulations. Their every move is closely watched by their training officer, throwing new surprises at every turn. A can of tear gas is a new challenge. Tear gas causes intense irritation in the eyes and a bad burning sensation on the skin. They were, they did exceptionally well, trust me. I mean, they, nobody ran, you know. Uh, this whole group is good that way. Later that afternoon, their training officer opens a can of tear gas for Tomer. It's the first time he's holding a weapon of this nature, but it won't be the last. The NSG training regimen is rigorous and not just for two-legged commandos. There is an entire contingent on four legs, the canine dog squad. NSG soldiers are called black cat commandos. Here, black cats and dogs are in partnership. Canine Commando Google believes that he is as good on two legs as his handler. Google is a highly trained sniffer dog and used to detect explosives in the overhead luggage rack of aircrafts. But it is the Belgian Malinois that NSG prefers while going into operations. This is Drona, the canine dog squad's star commando. Drona is the first commando into action. Drona is now a senior in the K-9 squad. And like humans, he also uses technology to improve his commando skills. The team relies on the K-9 visual system that the dog wears. The goggles provide the handler a visual of what Drona sees. The handler speaks to Drona through a device in the dog's ear. In this second exercise, Drona will go out of visual sight of his handler to hunt down a target almost a kilometer away. Drona is the full package among the best weapons of the NSG. Coming up, the inductees are pushed to the limits of human endurance, sleeplessness, pain, and exhaustion takes a toll.
In the vast National Security Guard training grounds, commandos perfect counterterrorism tactics. NSG has the only counter hijack force in India. Their commandos practice hijack scenarios in the on campus aircraft. Timing is paramount. FIT move, MIT move. Roger over. It can make the difference between life and death during real operations. MIT go. Coordination with extreme precision. That's the key. Aside from airline hijacking, there are other threats that can come from the sky. Drones can disrupt air travel. They also can deliver narcotics and explosives payloads, or assist in attack or surveillance. 81 drone in range. 81 engage. The NSG has the commandos and equipment to counter such tactics. The drone killer weapon system does not fire bullets, but emits invisible radio waves. It will neutralize a variety of unmanned aerial vehicles. The NSG top brass constantly reviews the technological preparedness of the force. They ensure that counter-terror activities are supported by the right kit. NSG does operations which requires specialized weaponry, special equipment, and also special protective gear. So we have to keep ourselves really updated on the kind of equipment we have. Today, NSG is equipped and prepared for diverse combat scenarios. Although it is the man behind the machine always that matters, but equipment plays also plays a very critical role. That small nanosecond difference or that small extra effort, it can, uh, in times of combat, it can mean the difference between life and death. So his operational effectiveness gets enhanced, his confidence increases, and his capabilities to fight also get greatly increased when he is uh, armed with the best possible equipment. So that when they go out to fight for the country, they do not lack anything that is required by them. The induction training at the NSG Counterterrorism Force has gone into overdrive. The trainers are turning on the heat. This exercise ka maksad tha, aapka physical or mental dono test lena. The first challenge for the inductees is to be put under physical and mental stress for 48 hours, non-stop. They are given various tasks throughout the day. Even the whole night is spent active. The next morning, the men have been without sleep for 24 hours, and they still have 24 hours to go. Despite feeling tired, I was excited about our next task, firing the sniper rifle. But our instructors were meant to put us under stress. So before we fired, they made us do 50 knuckle push-ups. This was the first time in my life that I was going to fire a sniper rifle. Detail line position. I wanted to get it right. Tail bar. But I was still breathless and panting after the push-ups. The slightest shake will affect the shot and targets are usually far away. In this case, it was at 400 meters. And it was such a happy moment, I really felt a sense of achievement. But honestly, at that time, I could only focus on the next 23 hours of stress that was coming our way. Snipers are essential in the NSG arsenal. These are highly trained marksmen 
who can hit pinpoint targets at extremely long distances, sometimes up to a kilometer away. State-of-the-art shooting ranges at NSG turn commandos into crack shots. Targets at NSG depict a terrorist hiding behind a hostage. It's little wonder that the NSG is called the Zero Error Force. Good. Meanwhile, the inductees continue with the 48-hour stress test. By mid-morning of the second day, they're flipping tires in 40-plus degrees heat. I don't know how much that tire weighed, but believe me, after a sleepless night, flipping it for almost 800 meters was hard. It was difficult to think that I had still over 20 hours to go. But in moments like this, I feel it's best to just focus on the next task and not to let your mind run in panic. By the evening, the men are allowed a short break. Keeping our body fit during the training is very important. And uh, I personally feel that taking care of our feet is of utmost importance. Because 90% of the time during the training, our shoes are on. And with all that uh, sweat and dirt, so whenever I get time, I just take off my shoes, change my socks, and wash my feet. This human body is a magical thing. It can really be pushed and it can do wonders. By the second night, we were so exhausted, but all of us were still going for it. Honestly, those memories just fade in and out of my mind. I can't even remember most of the things. <laughs> I just know that our instructors kept the scenario as real and difficult as possible. It is crazy, but it is, it is, uh, it is very close to reality. If it happens for real, this is going to be the case. The drills are made on the ground. The scenarios are made on ground scenarios. The more you practice, the more you practice, the better you will be for refinement. Now you will break, dinner, and then you will get the truth and the truth. When you are put under the, these conditions, I think these thoughts can come to anybody's mind. Breaking point, what is the limit, give up. But I think to be a commando, you have to be able to uh, shut out these thoughts. You have to be a fighter. Now we are putting them through this phase that we call stress hours. Uh, the main aim is to not let them sleep where they are given a limited amount of time in which they can you know, have their dinner, in which they want, they can take time out for you know, some recovery where they can take a 5 minute, 10 minute nap. Don't sleep, don't These are the times I miss my family. My sister had her first child, whom I have not even seen yet. And also my bike. I miss my bike. I really wish I had my bike here so that, and I wish I had more free time so that I can, could go out for a bike ride. I really miss that. By 300 hours, early morning, the exercises begin again. Forty-seven hours of stress conquered. One hour to go. One full hour of physical training. You somehow find whatever reserves in the body, and you don't. You can't think about giving up. You only think about getting the job done.
Coming up, the men reach their final hurdle. It's nothing but chaos. In that chaos, you have to have your peace of mind. जान निकल रही थी मैं धरती को मतलब जमीन को पीट रहा था नखोनों से जमीन को पाट रहा था मैं The National Security Guard has proved itself in operations time and again This success hasn't come easily. The nation has to feel confident that whenever NSG is requisitioned, this force will deliver. And whenever requisitioned, NSG will mobilize swiftly and deliver a surgical punch with lethality. So the whole orientation of NSG is to stay in a constant state of readiness. As we speak, there are eight teams in this country which can mobilize in 30 minutes or less. So that the vision of NSG to be a world-class zero-error force is never compromised. Only two weeks to go for the NSG Counter-Terror Force Unit induction training. But there are still mountains to climb. This is basically rock craft. You can see these natural wall faces. It's about a good 100 to 120 feet high. So it uh, gives them a, you know, a natural feel of uh, practicing and honing their uh, uh, raw craft. One of the reasons men like me want to do commando training are the different skills we get to learn at NSG. I've done some climbing before, but these conditions are very different. By late morning, the temperature had gone into the 40s. Mid-June, high humidity. So we call it toll tax. So toll tax may include like 100 push-ups or 200 push-ups. The purpose is basically to, you know, uh, tire them before they even start with their tasks. It's after the body is exhausted, you know, how well they perform the task. This is, uh, you know, what we are putting them through. That toll tax thing was really bad. In the middle of an exercise, you suddenly start to feel that your arms can't work anymore. But since you are hanging in the middle, there is no choice left. You have got to get to the other side. If you see these tasks, they are physically grueling. You can see on his face that he is exhausted, poor guy. You know, he must have done God knows how many push-ups by now. And uh, after the physical exhaustion, when they are put through it, that's you know, the making of the black cat. Well, I'm impressed, man. Among the many units at NSG, the bomb squad is special. It is in charge of monitoring, recording, and analyzing all bombing incidents in the country. The bomb squad commando's job is a difficult one. Even though they wear a protective suit, walking up to an explosive is not an easy task. They must physically carry the explosive to a containment chamber. Robots minimize risk. Remote operators can pilot these vehicles from over a kilometer away. Onboard cameras allow both reconnaissance and intervention capabilities.
The vehicle may be small, but it packs a massive punch. Fire. By late June, in the fifth week of the induction process, the men have reached the final hurdle. Because last three days, it was so humid, it was so warm, it was so weather packed, that it was good. Okay. The instructors have saved the worst for last. Minimum two and a half to three hours to finish the circuit, because uh, they won't be walking on it. They will be crawling throughout the way, and uh, they'll be tested uh, how they perform as a team. So what we expect from the trainee when he comes to NSG is uh, very high levels of physical fitness, very high levels of firing skills. So we take them maybe two, three notches higher than when they actually joined NSG. So the end product is a extremely efficient uh, commando who is ready to meet any kind of challenge in the course of his duty. Tomer and team will never forget the challenge they faced that day. Nicknamed the Holy Chamber, an obstacle unlike any other the men will encounter. It's a small room filled with smoke. The men must hold their breath and get inside. There's a box inside, all right? You have to get that box. That box has a key. You get that box out, open the box, and then there'll be a map inside from which you'll be able to move for the next target. I don't know how to describe it. The mind is in complete turmoil. You can't see anything, and you're trying to hold your breath. But the smoke does get inside you. But you can't escape anywhere. So you'll have to fight it. The team's first attempt to find the box was unsuccessful. That means only one thing. Try again. It's nothing but chaos. But then in that chaos, you have to have your peace of mind. Finding that box was the most difficult hurdle. After that, we knew that we can do anything. The six of us were now invincible. We had done everything NSG could throw at us. Nothing could stop us now. It's a matter of great pride for me because, you know, uh, I've pushed these guys you know, beyond their limits and I've helped them test themselves how far they can go. It had been a long journey to reach this point and despite the pain and tiredness we felt later that day, we were still excited that now we are going to be a part of NSG. After hard work, we will become a black hat commander that day. It will be good for us and for our family. These five weeks have been the most difficult time of this whole training of NSG. I think as long as we live in NSG, we will be with these six people in NSG. We will be with these six people in NSG. We will be with these six people.
The induction period has come to an end. Four and a half months of hardships are over. It is the morning of the blackening ceremony. In a little while, Tomer and the other men will take their places in the counter-terror force of NSG. Wearing black was an amazing feeling altogether. I would be lying if I told you that I was sure I would become an NSG commando, but I did it all. आप सभी का CC 118 के बलिदान परेड में हार्दिक अभिनंदन है। अब मैं ग्रुप कमांडर महोदय से निवेदन करता हूं कि इन बहादुर कमांडोस को पुरस्कार देकर इनकी हौसला अफजाई करें। Best hit exercise अजय, Major प्रसन्नजीत तोमर। We were awarded the best intervention team. After all the hardships, it really felt good to be acknowledged. Five weeks are over now. I, the devil part of mine is gone. I've done my part as a devil. Now, you know, I'm the brother, brother in arms. And finally, with a punch on his chest, Tomer is given the Bali Don badge. Welcome, Tomer. Insignia of the Black Cat Commando. After the ceremony, we were taken to the officer's mess for the first time. And what happened after that, I'll never forget in my entire life. The place that you are sitting is, uh, it's a, we call it cradle of sacrifice. You can look around, you'll see bullet-ridden souvenirs that we got from Taj Hotel in Mumbai. This particular chair that you are sitting on is from Palm Lounge of Taj Hotel. This is the place where Major Unni Krishnan made the supreme sacrifice. So when you are sitting here, you must realize that you, have, you are guarding a legacy as officers, as leaders. What Major Unni Krishnan did was taking leadership to a new height. For men who achieve their dream and become NSG commandos, induction is only the first step. They now have to live up to the standards set by the brave hearts who have preceded them. In almost 40 years of its existence, the National Security Guard has earned glory through sacrifice and blood. The men who laid down their lives inspire every day. Their heroics will always be remembered by a grateful nation.